So Kent, do you have any any thoughts on Maddie riding this bike? <laughs> yeah, twist the f problem and go fast. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another Revolt Garage. So we're back from El Mirage again. We went out there and set another record. Fastest electric bike on dirt again. Uh, we bumped the own record by one mile an hour. Not adjust your hearing aids. That is an electric motorcycle on course now. Twisting on the throttle, favoring the left side of the course. For that class record, 217. I believe he owns this record. And they're sporting a 2009 EQM. Bike number 2655 through the traps at 218.336, 218.336. Take an impound, 218. That is a new record, bumping it from 217. Congratulations, Matthew, on that run. Did we get it? Oh, don't do this to me. Did we get it? 218, baby. Yes. Dude. Yes. Yeah. 218, baby. Get it. <laughs> Only just. Um, I so didn't think we had it. We were so cold on the batteries that it was flat out from 100 mile an hour on and just tucked as much as I could and it. it went through one mile an hour faster than last time. It's funny that you're got... wide, wide open at 100. Yeah. Most people are like <laughs> wide open at 20 miles an hour. <laughs> so we're going to put some, figure out some kind of way to heat this. I'm going to put heating pads on it, maybe a tire warmer, maybe a bottle heater, whatever it is. We've got to get batteries hot for November. You need to jacuzzi out there. I, I would love a jacuzzi out there, yeah. We'll work on it. Maybe next year we can get some more sponsors. I, I'm going to start calling jacuzzi companies. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Affordable jacuzzi, put it back in a F-250 and get it done. <laughs> so that was great. No, we had a great crew. A um, ton of people showed up for us. Danny, Snow, Ari, Calvin, a ton of people just showed up out of nowhere to help us. So fantastic. Thanks, everybody, and we'll do it again in November. And the points championship is going as well as it can go for us. I think we've moved up at least one spot. The results aren't out yet, so we'll we'll just do the best we can and, you know, stranger things have happened. I'd say congratulations, but this guy's like, so like, full of <laughs> records. <laughs> no, it's really cool to see him just slaughtering it out there. Fastest bike basically every time he goes out. Um, kind of goes Noah's saying we have to start greasing his head to get through doorways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> put some, put some, put some, put some. You know, I got some really thick gear oil, so, um, <laughs> but it kind of goes to show like why we're doing this. I mean, we hang around with a lot of hot rodders, gas guys, everything else. And look, I love gas engines. They're one of my favorite things in the world. I'm just like so fascinated by them. But the fact that we get to do this over and over without any big problems, any bad issues, there's very little moving parts. It's so efficient, not just in, you know, efficiency, but for you. You're not rebuilding an engine every single time. But Dina went through an engine twice now at Bonneville. Yeah, they've been having a hard time this year. And, you know, blowing pistons up. And there's a lot that could go wrong in a reciprocating engine. Uh, and it can, I, I see E as well. These, there's really not much that could go wrong, knock on wood, somewhere. <laughs> there's, well, <laughs> yeah. you didn't spend a week taking every bolt out of that battery pack. Yeah, if you fill the battery packs with salt, you got to do some maintenance. Yeah, well, <laughs> throw, throw salt at an engine and see what happens. Yeah. So, you know, the reliability of these things is just, that's why we're doing it. It's the power, reliability, just we get to go have more fun. Huh? And the learning, because I would have thought, previous to all this land speed racing, that 10 degrees C on the batteries, like, that's enough. That's not cold. But the, the power loss from being that little bit colder is, it's substantial. It's really significant. So It's like running a cold that, engine. They don't cold run, run better. Well, not on the model, <laughs> to a certain point. Like, you know, my old carbureted two strokes, they didn't run really well until you got them warm. Uh, we are moving, so that's why we have this giant pile of everything behind us. So we've been doing the grind next door, getting our new shop ready. It is like four times the size of this shop. We have a lot of fun with it. Uh, more builds coming in, so we're kind of expanding and bursting at the seams here. So we'll show you guys that new place. Tesla Mina was back. It has. Yeah. Huge makeover, uh, new interior, new exterior, paint, body, all that stuff's done. So, you know, it doesn't get the attention you used to on the street. So now since the Tesla Mino is painted and upgraded and, and kind of looks good, it's 
it's a totally different contrast of the reactions that I've gotten. I mean, I've been driving this car around for what, four years? With a camo paint job on it, dead animals <laughs> off the front of its skulls. And I've been driving it now for, I don't know, three, four days. And the looks that you get are totally different. It's it, Before it was like, oh, look, check out that eye store or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. Now it's like, whoa, what kind of car is that? Like people really trip out on what is it? Like I just went to go pick up a floor grinder and I think the entire crew came out from the rental place. They had to stare at the thing. They didn't know what it was. One guy's like, I knew it was a Tesla. And I got, uh, one guy thought it was a Corvette. I don't know how he got that out of there, but whatever. But it's no longer, wow, you butchered a car. Now it's like, wow, that's pretty cool and interesting. I, I don't know if I like the new reaction, but yeah, only time can tell. It is a trip though. I think she's gained some, uh, some respect. Cool upgrade there. Um, we are going to SEMA in what, a week and a half, two weeks? Not long, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's happening quick. Uh, we do have a new product announcement that we'll be showing you. And if you guys have been watching our videos, a giant hit hint sitting on the corner of Maddie's desk of what we're going to be doing this year with our motors. And that will be debuted at SEMA 2024. It's going to kick things up a gear for sure. Uh, 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 yeah, nice one there. I see what you did there. Yes. Uh, very, very cool stuff. Uh, obviously, the dock is going to get it first. So we can put that in the Mustang. Test it out, and I'm sure it's going to turn heads because it's going to take the Mustang into a whole different level of competition and give us a lot more usable power. Usable, there you go. Thank you. Without letting the cat out of the bag, <laughs> usable power and give us more of a dynamic range of, mm -hmm. of what we can do with that vehicle. So stay tuned for that at SEMA. We're all going out there. We got a huge crew of us going this year, so it's going to be really fun. Check us out at the Simple Green booth. Um, that car turned out phenomenal. Uh, we're very proud of that build. Great job, everybody here on that car. So. That's also going to be debuted this year uh, at SEMA, so check it out. Yeah, we'll be launching some other products. We have a BMS that we'll be displaying too at SEMA and a couple other things. So, hey, stay tuned. Like, subscribe, smash that like button. Do something stupid. Uh, leave your comments down below. We want to hear about what you guys have to say. We try to reply. Uh, sorry if it takes us a little while, but we are in the middle of a move, and we'll catch you guys later. So she's still a work truck, huh? Still a work truck. Doesn't matter if she's pretty or ugly, she's still a work truck. <laughs> <laughs>